Hi, and welcome to the course, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today to start with our first lesson, which is what is prompt engineering? So as per the definition on the screen, it is the process of designing and refining input text, which is called the prompt for large language models to generate desired output responses. So simply put, it's typing your question or prompt in a way that gives you the best possible output from the language bot. So just to cover some of this lingo and terminology that we're going to be using throughout this course. In the middle here, we have a LLM, which is the acronym for a large language model. And throughout this course, we're going to be using um, OpenAI's ChatGPT. But prompt engineering can be applied to any large language model. But in this specific course, the focus is going to be on chat GPT and the other GPT models. All right. So large language models in general take as input, what you call a prompt. Okay. And this is just human written text, uh, what you call natural language. So it's not like there's any coding required in order to use these large language models. It's just your human written natural language, English or other languages. In fact, that you type into these large language models and then as output you get what you call the completion, right? So that's a technical term for the output. However, throughout this course, we're going to be using the word response. It just sounds easier to understand when you say it generates a response. So that is the wording we're going to be using. And then the process in between prompt and completion is what you call inference. Okay. And what inference does, that is the process by large language models of actually generating the response. So that happens internally by the large language model. You don't really see what's happening. It's the code running in the background, but what you do see is a typing out each token or each word one at a time. So this is what it looks like on the left hand side. We have the prompt. Okay. Then we have inference over here in the middle, and then we have the completion output. So what's important to note is that the amount of text you write as a prompt is limited. And you can see here, we currently have 27 characters of text written, but there is a cap to this. Different language models have different limitations. Larger ones, you can put in more text or more characters into your prompt. Smaller models can only take less characters. This is written inside what you call a context window. Okay. And then after you click the submit button, it starts typing out the response, as you can see there, and this process is called inference and then once it finishes after a few seconds, you'll get the final response, which is this over here highlighted in green. Right. So let's have a look at what response it gave us. The question was, what are large language models? Give it a short two sentence answer that is easy enough for high school students to understand or high school students to understand. And there's the response it gave us is large language models or computer programs that use AI to learn how to understand and generate natural language as it just did right now. So they are trained on large amounts of text data and can be used to generate text, answer questions and perform other language related tasks. All right. Now you might be asking the question, why even do prompt engineering? That is because the quality of the prompt is directly proportional to the quality of the response. So like the age old saying goes, garbage in equals garbage out. The same applies to prompt engineering and language models. Uh, the better the prompt that you give it, the better the response. And here on the screen, I have a quote by myself. All right. And that is similar to how Google democratized information. Large language models have democratized intelligence, all right? So kind of like back in the day when Google became available to everyone, you can simply just type in any question and it'll give you knowledge or information that you can read through. However, now with large language models, it's taking that one step further. Instead of it just giving you information, it's actually giving you intelligence. And that's both in the form of knowledge and creativity. And it's hyper personalized to the question that you ask it. It's not like it's just giving you a whole lot of search results. It's giving you the exact answer that you want. But right now I can't take credit for this quote because ChatGPT did help me generate this quote. And we'll be showing you later on in this course, how I actually generated this. So the moral there is you plus large language models equals superhuman intelligence. Just like how anyone in the world who has access to ChatGPT 
has this access to superhuman intelligence. That's only true if you know how to prompt it correctly. Right? There's a lot of people who don't really see the value in ChatGPT because they don't know how to prompt it or ask questions correctly, and they just think it's not useful for them. However, for those people who know how to correctly leverage the technology, it really helps them to become more efficient and effective with their work because it can do things much faster and more effectively. All right, so let's just run through a quick example just so you can understand at a high level what the difference between a bad prompt is and a good prompt. So here on the screen, we have a bad prompt on the left-hand side, which is write a marketing plan for an app. And then on the right-hand side, we have a good prompt. And you can see there's a lot more text involved. It's longer, there's more context. You're providing a role at the top, which is you're a digital marketing strategist. The context is your company is launching a new productivity app called Taskmaster, which helps small businesses and freelancers manage their projects. Then you provide it with a prompt, which is the instruction of what you want the model to do, which is develop a succinct digital marketing strategy for Taskmaster. And then we provide a list of five strategies or details that we want the strategy to include, which is stuff like what social media platforms to use, the type of content, how to engage with the audience, any partnerships or collaborations, as well as metrics to measure the success of a campaign. Now let's go have a look at what the response of the bad prompt looks like relative to the response of the good prompt. So the response of the bad prompt, you can see because we provided limited context, it gives a vague response. Stuff like goal setting, market research, pricing, positioning. Even though these things are all true, it's not really that helpful because it's just generic topics. Uh, whereas the good prompt uh, will give you a desired response. So you can see here for social media, it tells us specifically use LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube because that's where you can find small businesses. For content, it says you should demonstrate the app's features and benefits. And it tells you ways you can do this using infographics, how-to guides, product demos, testimonials, as well as webinars. Then it talks about engagement, stuff like social media Q and A's and live streaming in real time. It talks about partnerships and collaborations that you should partner with communities and freelancers who have existing relationships with small businesses. And then it also talks about ways to measure the success of the campaign. And these are the exact metrics that it tells you downloads, user engagements and feedback. So you can see just with this specific example, Writing a good prompt will give you a practical, helpful response that you can actually use in real life, as opposed to the response from the bad prompt, which was very vague and you can't really do much with. So that's the whole purpose of this course. We're going to be teaching you how to go about writing a good prompt, something like this. There's a whole lot of best practices we're going to follow. There's an art and a science, and we're going to go through all of that throughout the duration of this course. In the next lesson, we are going to be jumping into registering for ChatGPT. So I'll see you in the next lesson.